Craigslist. And if you're in the Charlotte area or somewhere in the Carolinas and you'd like to take a look, uh, just let me know. And we can set up a time for you to see the machine. Uh, and you are looking at a Singer 1591. And this machine has been around for quite a long time. Singer made it for quite a few generations. And as I've mentioned in some of my other videos, when Singer came out with a machine that was very successful, and most of their machines were, they kept them in production. So when a new machine came out, they would start a new production line and you'd have like a brand new model. But unlike, say, automobiles where they replace the uh, old model with the new one, they just kept building the same models al right alongside each other. And they did this because a lot of their customers were tradition bound. Maybe they wanted the machine that their mom or grandmom or their grandfather had been using. And, uh, and the great thing about Singer is they didn't change much when something worked. They tended to keep it in production for a very long time and they didn't mess around with it, which is one of the things I like as a restorer. Now, <clears throat> because Singer was such a big company, they were the size of GM or Toyota, they were massive. They had a lot of great uh, sewing machine models that became legends. Not just one legend, but quite a few. Now, the Singer 201, and I recently sold a Singer 201. You guys saw my recent video on the 201K. Uh, the 201 is, uh, was often referred to as the dressmaker's machine, and the 15 was referred to by its fans as the farmer's machine. Now, this machine is an oscillating shuttle, so it has sort of like this motion. It goes back and forth, and it has a vertical bobbin. It has a what's called a class 15 bobbin, which got its name from this machine. And that bobbin holds a ton of thread. It holds the most thread of any domestic home sewing machine. I've got another one here to kind of show you guys. If you know this bobbin, it's, it's uh, pretty wide. It's got lots of holes in it, uh, although you can sometimes see them with solid sides. Um, this bobbin type is, is, you can find it all over the world. Now, a lot of times, you know, people like me, you know, you'll be looking at YouTube videos and people say, well, I'm a real fan of this machine. And that's, that's all well and great, but, but it's not just my opinion of this machine, but the fact that so many companies copied it. In fact, I would suggest to you guys uh, that this is the most copied sewing machine design in history, or at least one of them. Now, the, how do you know a 15 when you see one? Well, you'll notice that there's no tension assembly discs on the front. It's the only machine that I'm aware of that was ever designed so that it's actually your tension discs uh, are on the left side of the machine and they're facing this way. That's one of the easy ways to spot a Singer Class 15. What you will see is that there are a ton of copies of this machine. Now you often see um, Japanese, they're often called, uh, I believe they're called HA, they're either C clones or HA1 clones, but they were basically Japanese copy of this machine after Singer quit renewing its patents. And the Japanese made a few changes, you know, they changed the, the bobbin case slightly, but the core of how this machine works was copied. And there are many versions and many colors that you will often see. You say, well, that kind of looks like a Singer, but it's not, it's a copy. Uh, Japanese copies are pretty good. Um, and in some ways they're beautifully engineered. There are a few areas where they were not quite as well engineered as the Singer, things like the quality of the, um, the metal screws and some of the parts uh, the Japanese did cut corners on. But, but if you have a, a clone, and I've some with them, they're very nice machines. I've actually restored some for folks, and, and, um, uh, and, and they have a lot of success with them. So, you know, I'm splitting hairs a bit here, but I wanted you to, to know that that's, this is the machine that, that launched um, all those copies. It was so popular that even the, the Italians, I believe there's a Necky machine model made in Italy, and even the German company Pfaff had a, had a machine that was a copy of this. That's how amazing this design is. So when I ramble on about how great a machine is, it's just, just not my own observation, but you can tell when lots of companies try to copy something, there's a reason for it. So why was this called the farmer's machine? Well, one of the things you'll notice is that all domestic machines have a limit to the, the thread weights that they deal with. Most machines handle uh, garment weight sewing thread, and you'll have light, medium, and slightly heavy. Most machines will handle all of those, but if you want to use something up to usually around a 69 upholstery weight thread, depending on the brand, um, as you get up to the thicker threads, a lot of machines start to get fussy. They don't like, their bobbing cases don't like those thick threads. This Singer 15 is one of the few vintage machines that will actually let you use slightly heavier threads. So 
Who would this machine be great for? Any of you who sew anything could use a, a Singer 15. But you're going to see me <laughs> sew on some fabrics today, and you're going to see why this is one of the machines that is um, one of the great um, uh, monster machines for, the, for, for domestic machines. This is a, a model that you would use if you're going to be sewing upholstery work. Those of you who sew umbrella or ballistic nylon, when you have heavy, thick fabric that other machines balk at, this is a machine that is uh, very likely to be able to, to, to do it. Um, so unless you need a walking foot, which of course this is not, other than that, this machine is tough. And it has a, had a reputation for being tough, and that's why if you lived on a farm, you were more likely to choose this than, say, the Singer 201, which has its own attributes. So anyway, so what have you got? You've got a straight stitch sewing machine. This is a long stitch reverse. When you come up, you go into back tacking. Of course, you can back tack. And if you come up to the center, you'll get shorter and shorter stitch length. You have bobbin winder on the front. Uh, very simple. I love Singer bobbin winders because they're easy to use and they can even be repaired. You don't have to replace them. Um, they still sell the springs for them if you ever need one, but this one works fine. Um, this machine also, unlike some of the other Singer 15 versions of this basic machine, this, the 1591 has what is called a potted motor. Singer did not call it that. They actually called it direct gear drive, okay, and direct reverse feed. Direct meaning that the motor's gears are connected to the gears of the machine, so there is no belt. My own personal Singer 66 has a belt. Um, I love machines with belts. I restore and sell them all the time. My, again, I sew with one that has a belt. But for those of you who don't want to bother changing belts on occasion, you don't have to with this machine. And it has a tremendous amount of torque, right? Uh, and people will argue and say that this motor has, you know, greater piercing power than others. Most of us, honestly, even when we sew heavy stuff, any of these vintage machines are going to be good. So, you know, we're really getting into the weeds when we start talking about, well, is a direct gear better? The great thing about direct gear is that you just don't have to have future belt maintenance. Um, and they have a certain sound that's really neat. Some people, that matters to them, and I, and I love the sounds they make. So, uh, th thread pattern is simple. She comes, uh, she, the uh, thread spool comes off the top, it comes down, it comes down around here. There's a check spring, obviously, like you have in all tension assemblies. It then comes up to the take-up arm, and then there are a few thread guides. You come down, and then the, sh the uh, thread goes from right to left, as some of the singers do. So, uh, the, um, this machine has been gone through. I have completely restored it. Let me see how I am on my time here. Just checking my time. I'm about seven minutes into this video. Anyway, um, I'm here in the sunroom. I've got plenty of light. There's a light with this machine, but you're not, we're not going to use it today. Um, it has really good decals. They're in good shape. The uh, lacquer's in pretty good shape. Um, but what else to say about it? It is a it is a tractor of a machine, and it, it had a reputation that it's just uh, one of the greats, you know. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and that must be true when it comes to sewing machines. Oh, one other thing to tell you guys, uh, and you're going to see this in the photos, the table for this machine, I believe, is walnut. But the main thing to mention is that it is in a treadle style, but it's not a treadle table. Uh, a lot of people, if they were trying to get away from treadles and into electrified machines when they were state-of-the-art, um, Anyway, it's this, this table has lots of beautiful storage, um, but it's kind of interesting because it, it never was a treadle. It was just designed to look like one. Uh, let's see. We're going to be sewing. I've got some cargo pant cotton today with some thick seams, and then we're going to go over to the denim and get some real heavy stuff. So let's take a look. Um, I'm going to start sewing for you guys. I think I have, I'm pretty sure I put a jeans needle in here, size 16. And just like all singers, or most singers, I can get slow needle control. And this table is set up, guys. You can use the foot pedal on the floor, but you also, and I'll do some back tacking. You see it back tack. Um, you can also take the foot pedal as I have it now, and you can put it into a, the slot that came in the table. Singer was really great about this. And it converts to a knee control. Uh, I enjoy both. I don't have a preference. Some of you might. If you do, you have the option to choose foot or knee control. That is at your disposal. And you'll see, I, I sped it up. I wanted you to see that this machine can sew pretty darn fast. Fast enough for most of you, I believe. 
but then I also like being able to go slow. I'm, I'm a slow sewer personally, but some of you may be uh, master sewers and you can sew really quickly. And of course, I'm gonna, I, let me shorten the stitch length a bit here just to show you guys that it has that short length. A lot of you never use this feature, but Singer had some of the best short stitches um, in, their, in their machines, and so I like to show that sometimes. Go back to long. Now, I'm gonna show off one more quality of Singer's, and this has a lot to do with how their feed dogs were designed. Watch as I come across the fabric here, okay? Now, notice I'm going to just basically do a turn here. I can turn my fabric, particularly if I make sure my foot pressure is not too high. Uh, singers are renowned for this. For those of you who like to play with free motion work, you can do this. And it's because of their, their feed dogs and how their feed dogs were designed. Some machines, some of the, uh, the German machines, are, it's harder to do this on. Okay. Scissors. So I'm going to show you guys the stitch quality. Okay. Let's, uh, okay, yeah, that's coming out great in the light. So this is cargo pant. You can see those rolled seams. And notice, even when I'm just free, I'm just going around in, in making curves. Even when I do this, guys, look, notice that the, the thread tension is beautiful. It doesn't even miss a beat. Even when I'm doing my little, my little uh, you know, go-kart maneuvers here with the machine. So again, very forgiving and very powerful. Okay, I had been, uh, I've been testing the machine out because when I demonstrate it, I like to test it, make sure it's ready to do what I want it to do for you folks on the video. So anyway, I've got, I'll show you one, two, three, and then here's the fourth layer of denim. But in addition to four layers, guys, each one of these layers has one of those very dense, you know, denim seams that are really tough on sewing machines. So. I've already made a, a test row and I'm gonna sew for you guys now and I wanna demonstrate for you that when people say this machine is tough, they're not kidding. Um, and I do this and you'll notice that I demonstrate how powerful machines are based on what I know about what they're capable of uh, and not based on some sort of um, silly um, sort of uh, over the top demonstrations. On YouTube, there are videos of people doing really intense things with sewing machines, and I don't, I don't like that because uh, I don't think anything should ever be oversold. Now I'm going to make sure my seam goes, there we go, goes right under the, the foot there. Turn around. Now, you'll see me going sort of at a medium speed, guys. I go right over that massive seam there, okay? I could go faster, the machine is powerful enough, and you guys have heard me say this before, but remember that needle is having to do quite a lot. And I don't care what machine you're using, you can really break a needle if you, uh, if you go too fast. You know, I just did a turn, even in this heavy denim, which, you know, I wasn't even, wasn't even planning on doing. So again, that is testament, guys. Let me pull, I want you to see the stitches up close. That's part of the reason for this video in the first place. But take a look. Notice the just amazing stitch. Sorry about that bump. Just notice the amazing, uh, uh, you know, tension control. Wanted to check my time. So there you go, guys. Really strong work if you need a strong machine. Uh, that will back tack. You can go in reverse and lock your stitches in. The Singer 15 is one of Singer's many legendary machines, and um, it is excellent for those of you who need to use thicker threads or you've just got some really heavy fabric and you want a machine that can handle it. This is one of them. There are several, but this is one. And um, if you want to set up a time to see the machine, I'd be happy to show it to you. As you guys know, uh, if you're brand new, half of my customers have never touched a sewing machine before. So I'm happy to, to teach you how to use it. Uh, and then you can take sewing classes that will you know, further your actual sewing skills. And for those of you who know how to sew, I can easily show you how to operate this machine. It is remarkably simple compared to the new computerized uh, pieces of junk that are out there for, for people to buy new. So anyway, guys, again, let, if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to answer them for you. And also, I finally put a post on Craigslist. If you have a machine that you want restored, maybe it was in your family, belonged to, your, to one of your relatives, uh, I restore other people's machines, not just, not just the ones you see for sale. So anyway, this is a hobby. It's something I really enjoy, uh, saving these machines and finding good homes for them. So thanks for watching.